How's it going everybody? This is Jeff Bain with Team Real and the Blues. One of the biggest questions I get asked on my channel, don't have anything to do with fishing, don't have anything to do with how-tos, but the biggest question I always get is about my boat. This boat is actually a 1974, that's the year, not the model, a 1974 StarCraft. Uh, she's got battle scars, she's been used, she's been abused, but uh, some of you may have seen the video. I have a video on the channel right now that talks about how I built it. It's just pictures and stuff like that. But I just kind of went through basic stuff on how I built this boat. But I get a lot of questions about how I got it set up, what it looks like. So I figured I'd do a quick tutorial of the boat and the top here. And I get a lot of questions about this, especially here lately now that the weather's got colder. This top was something I built, uh, Lord, several years ago. We fished a tournament around here and we had about five inches of snow and ice during that tournament. I had a standard bimini top on the boat, like to have froze to death. The wind was blowing 20, 30 mile an hour. Well, I made up my mind that evening when I got home that we had another tournament coming up in three weeks that I would have a hard top on this boat before we finished that tournament. So I built that top. That's why I didn't film it. I was trying to get it done and get it knocked out. Didn't think anybody would really be interested in this top. But what I'm going to do, I'll do a quick walk through the boat. We'll do a quick walk through the top. And I have another video. It's going to come out probably in the next week or so. Once I get it all edited up, that's actually a pretty detailed video about how this top was built. I don't have actual video of me building it, but I have a lot of pictures I took while I was building it. And I can discuss all the things that I've done right and all the things I've done wrong that i redone. But uh, it should be a good video. If you're not a subscriber, please subscribe. It does help us, and uh, that way when I do finish this video, it'll pop up, uh, ring that bell, and you'll be notified that it's coming up. All right, let's talk about the boat. All right, the first thing we're gonna talk about, well, as you can tell, this is not no trailer queen. And in case of y'all that aren't into classic cars, you'll have these guys that'll redo these cars. They'll spend tons of money on them and they never leave a trailer. They haul them from location to location on a trailer. They don't get scratched, they don't get abused. When I built this boat, I knew it was gonna get abused. Not in a bad way, in a good way. I was gonna use it, and I was gonna use it a lot. So you'll see she's got some battle scars. Funny story, the first trip I took it out, or the first tournament I took it out on was Lake Monticello, 100 foot deep lake. It was dark, I'm running along in 100 foot of water, and just my luck, just finished the paint job thing looked like brand new i hit a shallow water buoy that had broke loose from its tether now this shallow water buoy is one of those great big ones i hit it running 40 plus miles per hour caught it right here got me a white stripe all the way down the side of it knocked a little dent in it but it didn't hurt it none these things are built like a tank and especially this one after i got done with it all right so let's get into the video you'll notice i got these two dumps right here one thing that I tell people and I encourage people to do if they got one of these old Starcrafts, we all got the bilge pumps in the back. Well, the bilge pump in the back works fine once the water fills up and it gets to the back. This boat here, when I, when I built it, I took out all the flotation out of the floor, which this one didn't have much in it because it was nothing but a skin when I bought it. But I didn't put any of the styrofoam flotation back, at least not the, the stuff that expands and contracts that you pour out. What I done instead was I put sheet styrofoam, two inch thick sheets of styrofoam. I cut them to match the ribs at the bottom of the boat completely. And like I said, if you'll look back at the other video I've got, I think it's a 1974 Starcraft build. It'll be on my channel. You can see I put all new PVC ribs in this boat from side to side. There is no wood in this boat anywhere. But get back to these right here. The reason why I'm telling you this is when it rains, these boats get a little water in them. You have to wait for the water to get to the back well, with that styrofoam in the bottoms of them that seals them off not the sheet styrofoam like i use but the pour styrofoam it actually encapsulates the water the water can't get from the front to back unless it flows across the floor any water that gets underneath the floor stays under the floor so i did not want that so all of my styrofoam has got a one inch air travel underneath it from front to back there's times i will literally park this thing on a hill put a hose pipe in the front here and just fill the bow with water, let it run to the back and flush all the old grit and sand out of the bottom of the boat. But getting back to these for the third time, this is actually a bilge pump drain. And where I put it was right here about in line with the bow. 
The reason why these boats, when they're sitting in the water, the lowest point is not the back, unless you've got it overweighted in the back. The lowest point on this boat is actually right there. It's got a little bit of a dip in the bow on these Starcraft. So I always tell people, put your bilge pump up here in the front. That way you know when the boat's sitting stationary in a lot of rain, the boat starts filling up with water. By the time the back fills up with water, you've got 40 or 50 gallons in this bow sitting in the nose. So for me, it made sense to put a bilge pump there. I can pump the bow out and I'll never get water in the back, but that's only during a heavy rain. But anyway, here's the drain for that bilge pump. And this drain right here, I've got two. I've got one on each side. Now when we get on the inside here, you'll understand what this drain actually does. I've got a 80 gallon live well built into the bow. The live well actually goes from right here to about right here. So it takes up a good bit of the bow, but that live well is built to where I've got bilge pumps in the back. I've got a bilge pump in the front. I've got live well pumps in the back. It's a 500 gallon live well pump. 500 gallons seems to be the perfect amount of water for having two of these overflows. The two overflows inside the live well, if that pump turns on, when I get a fish during the tournament, I'll turn the pump on. Once I turn the pump on, I never turn it back off. And the water will fill up the tank and it'll trickle out these two sides. I got one here and got one on the opposite side in the exact same spot. We'll go over that once we get inside the boat. Okay, so here we are, I'm talking about the live well outside. Well, here's the live well in this boat. Just to give you an example, I've got a little pop-up hinge here. There's the live well. The thing's 26 inches deep, 50 inches long, 22 inches wide. And like I say, the pump fills in through the front up here. I've got a drain in the bottom of it. When the tournament day's over, I just pull the plug down here, plugs in the very bottom. When I pull the plug, I've actually got it plumbed from here all the way to the back through two inch PVC pipe. So what happened, you pull the plug, all the water runs out here, runs all the way to the back, and it dumps literally right on top of the bilge pump in the back. Now to give you an idea how big this tank is, you can see where I'm standing. You can see how far I'm down in here. I can literally climb inside this tank, stick my legs out up underneath the console, and shut the tank. I'm too old for that, and it's too cold for that too. But that's the live well I built in this boat. And what's funny is, you know, you'll see a lot of people build live wells out of uh, toolboxes. Well, this actually isn't a toolbox. I started with a belly box that was on a semi truck. They're perfect. They're super thick. Sides are a lot thicker than you'll find in like a normal truck toolbox. They're wider and they're already watertight because they go underneath the truck bed. So you can see, it was pretty easy to do. All I had to do was pretty much uh, make the spot inside the boat to put it in and drop it inside there. I ended up cutting it off about six inches to make it fit inside the boat just a little bit better. But it works out nice. Uh, like I say, can't ask for a better live well. Put a solid top on it and there you go. Great live well. I've had people say, but how does the boat run with a live well this big up in the bow of it? In actuality, I go just as fast, if not faster. It runs just as smooth. I can't really tell if it's filled with water or if it's not filled with water. Don't change the uh, attitude or the way the boat runs at all. Another feature I framed into this boat when I built it was I built this deck on the front to where the live well is actually up inside of it. But if you'll notice, I got air storage here. It's not dry storage, it's air storage. It goes all the way back about a foot. It's a perfect place to put my drift socks or anchor ropes or extra anchors. They'll fit right up in there. It makes it easy to get to. And if they're wet, don't matter. It won't hurt a thing. And I've got one of those on each side. We'll pick her up here. One on each side. Now the other thing, you'll notice I've got that bulkhead up front. This bulkhead is completely removable. Uh, in the summertime, I'll take this bulkhead out and uh, not use it, mainly just because it makes it easier to throw a cast net up in front. But I'll take in the wintertime, I'll put the bulkhead back in. It takes literally two minutes to put the bulkhead back in, and that way in the wintertime, it cuts out all the draft, and it keeps it nice and warm in here when you're fishing in the wintertime. Now here's the front of the console, and you see the console is the exact width of my live well. 
and I put a little pad here just for in case somebody wanted to sit up on the front here going down the lake they got something to lean their back against now everything I do I try to keep it as simple as it can be the simpler something is the less likely it is to break and easier to fix if it does so here's the uh, top I got like I say it's been several years since I built her she's held up really really well I've added a few things here and there over the years uh, after I built it you can see I added that new bar there just to give it a little bit more strength across there to hold the metal straighter where I put regular glass in it I had plexiglass in it at first it worked but the problem with plexiglass it really yellows it gets scratched up and it really don't hold up too well so I went to real glass I've got 3 16 inch glass it's normal glass it ain't tempered but uh, it seems to work good but what I've done, and I'll go to it more in detail on the top video that I'm making. Uh, I've actually got a, I ain't gonna say bulletproof film, but I've got a film on the glass on the inside that makes it shatterproof. So if you hit this with a hammer, the glass will break, but it won't go anywhere. It'll stay intact. It won't fall inside the boat. So that's why I went with standard glass. That and the fact that standard glass is about hmm, probably 20% of what temper would be. So I just went with standard. Like I say, everything about this top is pretty, pretty simple. I didn't use a welder on anything except for the bottom track. I welded the track just mainly just to tack and hold it in place. It's not for structural purposes. Everything on this boat is pretty much welded or epoxy. Now, if you look here, you can see these runners are going full length. These are actually eighth inch thick. These are eighth inch thick just because it's the roof. And what I've done was I put little gussets across it using epoxy, and I'll go over it more in detail in the other video. But I use a special epoxy on it, and I promise you, you cannot take it apart. So I've done that. Same thing across the top. Anywhere I made a union, I've done that. But you gotta think the top, all this metal is one piece on each side. There's no pieces inside, you know, it's just one continuous piece. So once you do all the riveting, it ain't going anywhere. Like I said, I keep everything as simple as possible. Stainless steel barrel latches to open the door. Now here's the uh, simplicity of it. The door swings in. And then I just simply use the same thing you use for Bimini hardware with the pins. Put the pins in. Door stays up out of the way. It doesn't rattle. I put rubber bumpers right there. Now the beauty of this is, I originally had the door where it was going to swing out. If you've done that, then it's in the way to throw the cast net. But by doing it this way, it leaves the entire deck wide open. I can stand out, throw the cast net, the door's not in the way. I can leave the door up 90% of the time and never have to lower it down. Only time I lower it down is going down the lake and in rain or when it's super cold outside. And again, if you need to put it down, just pull the pins, swing it down, Latch it back. 